Do you know what color a cockroach is? If you said brown, well, you're wrong. It's Vis and Cymex, and it has slight hints of fetus as well. That's not gibberish. Those are colors that you can't see, but I can. I'm the first documented human with pentachromatic vision. That means that I have five different types of cone cells in my eyes. Almost every human being is a trichromat. That means there are three types of cone cells in their eyes. These cells can each distinguish around 100 individual shades, but they mix together with one another, which means that the average trichromat can see about a million different colors. As a pentachromat, I can see around 10 billion. No other mammal can do that. Only pigeons and a few butterflies. If this doesn't sound like a big deal, then let me ask you a question. What's the most beautiful thing you've ever seen? A sunset? A rainbow? Mine was a hostess Twinkie. I was in a 7-Eleven and I saw a bunch of them sitting in a box on one of their shelves. Whatever chemicals they put in those things all have their own colors. Together, they create this beautiful swirling mosaic. Kind of makes the Twinkie less appetizing, but certainly better to look at. These colors are indescribable. I mean that in a literal sense. I can't describe them to you. Color is an inherently private event, for the same reason you can't tell that the shade of blue you see on a lid of I can't believe it's not butter is the same as the shade of blue that your boss sees. I can't tell you what most of the colors I see look like. There are some things I didn't even know had color until I became pentachromat. Movement has color. Every time something moves, it creates a faint trail of a color that I can only describe as energetic. I've taken to calling this color Vis. Most fruits are multicolored, but trichromatic eyes only pick up on the primary color presented in them. If peaches look to you how they do to me, then you probably wouldn't want to eat them anymore. I wasn't born a pantochromat. I was born with boring old trichromatic vision just like you. Then I got in a car accident. You know what color the sparks are when two pieces of metal collide? I call it ENK. That's the sound my wife's car made when it hit the Subaru next to us. It's actually a comforting color. It evokes the same kind of feeling that you get when you smell wood smoke. Blood isn't just red anymore. It's also cruel. Blood was the last thing I saw before I lost my vision. Victoria was driving. She was drunk, but not as drunk as I was. We were fighting. It was my fault. Was she worth it, John? Was she worth ending all that we've had together? She wasn't. Hiring a prostitute was never something that I thought I would do. Losing my marriage was never something that I thought I would do. But I had grown bored with our marriage. I wanted something new. I didn't know that wanting something new would mean she would let go of the wheel. As the car swerved onto the shoulder, I tried to pull the steering wheel back. I pulled too hard. We slammed into a car that had just pulled into the far right lane. A 17-year-old girl was behind the wheel. The collision snapped her spine in half. She died in a pool of her own blood. Our car spun out and crashed into the median. Victoria was thrown from the car. My seatbelt pinned me to the seat. The windshield exploded into a million pieces. Broken glass has a whole slew of colors present in it. Too many to name. Glass rained down on me. It sliced through my skin like it was clay. Two big shards lodged themselves in my eyes. The last thing I saw was blood. The last thing I heard was a Victoria screaming. God, it hurts. Please, God, it hurts. I'm not sure when I woke up. Without my vision, I was helplessly adrift in a sea of darkness. After a while, I heard a voice asking me if I could hear it. 
It was a woman's voice. A nurse. Yes. Where am I? She told me I was in the hospital and that I had been in an accident. I couldn't see her face, but I could tell she was frowning when she told me that I was going to be blind for the rest of my life. As it turns out, that's all I did for the first few days. No doctor could help me. After a week of living in my own personal darkness, someone up above took pity on me. They called the specialist. He was working on an experimental procedure. How much? No money. No. No money. I'll do the procedure for free. He had a slimy southern accent. What's the catch? Mr. Southern Gentleman was from a testing facility in Gilliman County, Colorado, that was working on biomechanical enhancements. They needed somebody whose eyeballs had been destroyed, but somehow still had functioning optic nerves. Someone who still had full brain function and could describe what they saw. Someone desperate enough that they wouldn't mind being a human guinea pig. That was me. The surgery took four hours. They had warned me beforehand that my experimental eyes would be more powerful than my original eyes. They didn't warn me that my pantochromatic eyes would see things that mankind wasn't meant to see. After the procedure, the first thing that struck me was my fingernails. They were colorful in a way I had never seen before. I asked the nurse if she had painted them. She hadn't. Her fingernails were also colorful. As it turns out, fingernails aren't colorless. They're a color I call fetus. It's probably for the best you can't see it. It's not a pretty color. The nurse's breath was a color I called nubula. Most people's breath is still colorless to me, but if a person smokes cigarettes regularly enough, then it becomes nubula. Growing used to being able to see again meant growing used to all the new colors. Everything looked different than it did before. People's faces are so complexly colored that it's easier to identify someone by the random patches of color on them than by the actual shape of their face. It's comical that there is so much fighting about skin color in the world, because when you can see 10 billion colors, the slight chromatic differences between black and white don't make a difference. Sometimes I think that my new vision is a positive thing, but then I'm reminded of when I first laid my eyes on my wife. I'm reminded of the things that no man should have to see. The first time I saw her was two months after the accident. Victoria had been more heavily injured than me. When she was thrown from the car, it shattered the bones in both her arms and legs. The bone fragments tore up her musculature pretty bad. It took 12 hours of surgery to save her life. They had to amputate everything. Her skin was so burned by the asphalt that it took four skin grafts to restore her face. They never got it quite right. I thought I was prepared for Victoria to be a quadriplegic. Doctors explained her condition ahead of time and warned me that it would be gruesome. They warned me that her limbs would be nothing more than stubs but they couldn't see what I could see. They couldn't have warned me that there would still be something where her limbs had once been. Four ghostly blobs extended from her bandaged arms and legs. They had the shape of her missing appendages, but they were contorted and bent at weird angles. When she moved the stubs, the blobs followed as if they were the original limbs, albeit broken. They were a color that I've come to call anima. I dread seeing the color anima. It appears in very consistent circumstances. Most amputees have anima limbs sprouting from their stubs. The air around graveyards and crematoriums is tinted anima. Occasionally, the meat you get at the grocery store has an anima aura emanating from it, but only if it's really fresh. For a while, I thought that Enema was the color of death. Last week, I learned what it really is. 
Victoria passed away last Monday. It's been almost a year since the accident. I guess it was her time. My wonderful Victoria fought as long as she could. But eventually her body gave up. She died in our bed while I was in the shower. I was heartbroken when I found her. Only when she was gone did I realize how much I took her presence for granted. I called 911 and laid down next to her while I waited for the ambulance to arrive. Her last day had been hard for the both of us. Even with heavy medication, Victoria experienced constant phantom pain in her missing limbs. On the night she was able to sleep through the pain, she usually had vivid dreams about the accident. I tried to push the thought out of my mind, but, but I was reminded of the crash every time I laid eyes on her ghostly limbs. When her time came, I secretly hoped her passing would be a relief for the both of us. It was a beautiful funeral. I picked out the flowers. She would have liked them, even if she couldn't have seen all the colors in them that I could. When I got home, I saw there was a stain on the bed where her body had been. It looked familiar. It was anima, the color of her ghostly limbs. I changed the sheets. After a few hours, another stain developed. I changed them again. The stain came back. No matter how many times I washed the sheets, the stain kept coming back. I started sleeping on the couch to get away from it. Looking at the anima colored fabric just reminded me of her death. Two days ago, I was in our bedroom changing clothes, and I noticed that the stain had disappeared. In the space, inches above where it had been, there was now an anima colored cloud floating in the air. It was moving. Over the course of the next few hours, the cloud took a humanoid shape. The shape of my Victoria. Last night, the anima cloud got out of bed. Its movement, painstakingly slow, but somehow very human-like. This morning, it was standing in the kitchen when I made breakfast. I tried to ask my neighbor if he could see the shape too, but he just looked at me like I was crazy. Only my special eyes can see the anima figure. It doesn't have a face or anything, but I can still tell that it's staring at me. It follows me everywhere. It sits in the passenger seat when I drive my car, stands next to me at the bank, watches me while I shower. It's right behind me even as we speak. A dark, indescribable colored visage of my dead wife staring at me watching me with eyes that aren't there I've tried to outrun it but it always catches up to me it won't leave me alone anima won't stop following me anima isn't the color of death the thing following me can't be dead because it knows where I am it moves just like Victoria used to move it's her I know it's her. I see anima clouds like her everywhere now, following people. They're in the shape of our loved ones. The ones who can't bear to tear themselves away from us. Most people have one. If you've lost a loved one, then you probably do. Only my eyes can see them. Victoria. If it really is you in that cloud, then I'm sorry for everything I did wrong. I'm sorry for all the words I never got a chance to say. Please, don't follow me anymore. I just want to be alone. I know you can hear me. Stop staring at me. I don't think Anima has the color of death. That thing, that thing that follows us is alive. At least in their own way, they're the souls of the departed. Souls that are trapped, souls that can't stop following us. Man was never meant to see Anima. We were never meant to know what happens to us when we die. 
I see the colors you cannot. And they hide a horrible secret. There is no heaven. There is no hell. When we die, we don't move on. We stay and watch. Silently. Until the end of time. Please leave me alone, Victoria. Please. Stop staring at me. <laughs>